Kupfenberg. I'm here from Long Linda University, where I've been a professor of nutrition a long time, and I'm connected with Valmar, a group here that's doing cooking schools and things like that, and I'm trying to explain why you need to learn how to cook. Now, one of the big reasons is the statin medicines are being used by 25 million Americans, they're suggesting, to lower their blood cholesterol. What good is that doing? Now, you need to know a little about, about these statin medicines. They said if they did any good, they would lower your risk of heart disease maybe 30%. You know, we've got a lot of people with heart disease, but this is, will help only 30%. Whereas lifestyle, you can lower the risk 80%, just with proper lifestyle, without medicines. But the Cochrane database, that's the gold standard. In other words, this group of people are the specialists in that area who got together and reviewed all the studies done on that subject and come up with a conclusion as to what we should know about this. And they came up with a conclusion that they suspected that giving statin medicines to people to lower their blood cholesterol probably is not healthy very much, if any. There was a big outroar among the physicians against that view because they had been taught <clears throat> for so many years, this is what you need to do. Take these statin medicines to lower your blood cholesterol. Well, then other things came up. We found out that the people who are older people with higher levels are living longer than those with lower levels. So that means there's something wrong with our theory. But recently, they reviewed 11 studies that were done. And they found out that life expectancy did not increase any in those that were given the statin medicines. Well, that was for 93% of them. It did not help at all. It helped with 7%. They lived eight and a third years longer. Those were probably the ones who already had heart disease. The medicine probably is effective for them, but it's not effective just to lower their blood cholesterol if they don't have heart disease. The problem is we're giving it to everybody to lower their blood cholesterol. And as the Cochrane database said, our gold standard, they said is very questionable whether it's doing any good or not. And now we know from this review of these 11 different studies that it is not doing any good for 93% of the people who are taking it. If we were giving it just to those who had heart disease, we might find it useful. However, we don't know who has heart disease. Maybe if we did the calcium score, we would know. But that's an expensive test. Not enough doctors know how to do it. Insurance companies wouldn't pay for it anyway. So it, that's a little problem. So what should we be telling our patients today? The information is now, according to the World Cardiology Journal, that we should tell our patients this thing. We should tell them that we thought that lowering blood cholesterol would do away with heart disease. We found out that was an error. That is not true. But we should tell them what really is useful, and that is tell them that lifestyle is what will really benefit them. Now, what is a lifestyle? Not smoking, cutting out the alcohol, exercising every day, keeping your weight down, getting more fruits and vegetables. Those are the things we need to do to lower our risk of heart disease. But the medicines are not doing much good. Now, in the 2013 revision of the guidelines for use of the statins and and how to prevent heart disease, they did say that there's no recommendations to take medicine for people who are older than 75 years of age. That's true, because these older people with higher levels are doing better than the people with lower levels. That shows us there's something wrong with our theory, okay? And I think that's correct, there is something wrong. Now, some people think that should be lowered to 65 and not just 75, okay? There's another interesting thing. Most of the studies on statin medicines have been done on men. 
Now, a lot of doctors say, well, the women are just like men. Let's, let's treat them the same way. Well, now, I'm a physician. I know there's a difference between men and women. Their risk factors are different for heart disease. For example, a man, it's the LDL cholesterol that's elevated that is the bad risk factor for him. That means too much saturated fat, too many steaks. For the women, it's different. Their risk factors are low HDL cholesterol, probably a lack of exercise. Risk factor is also for high triglycerides, probably overweight is the reason for that. So their risk factors are different. So they did do three studies just with women, and they found out that in two of the three, they had an increased heart attack risk, increased death rate, if the people took the medicines to lower their blood cholesterol compared to those who did not take their medicines. So it's questionable whether all these women that are being given these pills uh, to lower their blood cholesterol, whether it's worthwhile at all, particularly when they don't know that they have any heart disease. And they're being treated, though, just like men. Now, I don't expect the Heart Association to come about and tell everybody to change their view on this, but this is what the scientific evidence is saying. And this is why the World Cardiology Journal says we should tell our patients we've been in error in thinking lowering blood cholesterol would take care of all the heart disease when we really know it doesn't, but we should tell them what really benefits them is having a proper lifestyle. There are problems with these uh, medications. There are side effects for any medication you take. We need to avoid the medicines if we don't have to. But let's get into the idea of primordial prevention. Now, <clears throat> secondary prevention is when you have had a heart attack and the doctor treats you to prevent you from having the second heart attack. Primary prevention is when you have hypertension high blood pressure, and the doctor treats you so you don't have the first heart attack. Primordial prevention is one step before that, which is living a lifestyle so you never get high blood pressure in the first place. Now, the problem with that theory is we know it's true. Scientifically, we have the evidence for it. They've followed thousands of people for many years, and they find out people who live this lifestyle don't have heart disease. But the problem with it is less than 5% of the U.S. population is living that lifestyle. The American Heart Association has a goal that by the year 2025, we will have at least 20% of the population living this way. But it's not going to happen very easily. We know the theory. The theory is correct. But to get people to do it is very, very difficult. So our Next big breakthrough in scientific basis, scientific business, is going to be in figuring out how to persuade people to live the proper lifestyle. Hi everyone, my name is Marcy Hironis with Valmar Health. To see more videos with Dr. Schaffenberg, subscribe to my YouTube channel. We talk about a ton of fun stuff like healthy vegan food, product reviews, health and beauty tips, and I want you all to be a part of it. Let me know in the comment section if there's any other type of video that you would like to see. Thanks so much for watching today, guys. We'll see you in the next video.